The subject for today's EM and 5 is going to be shoulder dislocations, and more specifically, the injuries that are associated with shoulder dislocations. So you have a patient that comes in with an obvious shoulder deformity, pretty suspicious for dislocation. But before you start thinking about your favorite relocation technique, you need to decide if you're going to get an x-ray to see if there's any associated injuries. Now first off, let's talk about who we want to get a pre-reduction film on. So people that are at risk for fractures are people that are greater than 40 years old, first-time dislocations, and some kind of traumatic mechanism. And studies have shown that if you don't have any of these risk factors, and there's no other gross deformity or bruising, edema, hematoma, there's no real need for an x-ray. And that's because these rules have a 96.6% negative predictive value for fracture if they're not present. So say we decide this is a first-time dislocation, we do want to get some imaging. What x-rays are we actually going to order and what are they showing us? So these are the typical views, and these first three can make up your instability series of the shoulder. So AP, this is going to be directly 90 degrees to the patient, and you can see that the glenohumeral joint here is a little bit on an angle. And that's in comparison to the oblique view, in which you have a very parallel, direct view of this glenohumeral joint. Now most dislocations you probably can see on an AP or oblique view. However, another view you might find helpful is the axillary view. You can see a good example of this. And I should mention that these demonstrations of the x-rays are all from Dr. Shriveman from the University of Wisconsin Department of Radiology. He has a website that I listed down here that has some great walkthroughs of these different imaging setups. And then the West Point view is fairly similar. It's just a slightly different angle. You're coming from a little bit more posterior angle. And lastly, we have the Y view, and this is very helpful if the AP view doesn't really show us if it's an anterior or posterior dislocation. This is the one to look at to make sure you're not missing that posterior. So you can see the setup for this is kind of interesting. You're starting posterior and then shooting laterally directly down the angle of the scapula. And that's why the scapula appears kind of paper thin right along here and just posterior to the rib cage with the spine in view as well. So this is very helpful because you can see the this is the Y view here. That's the scapula. Here's that paper thin that's the edge of the scapula. You're looking directly down it. And it's very easy to see if the humeral head is either anteriorly or posteriorly displaced. Now, one thing you can get a little confused as far as which direction you're looking at. So just remember that an anterior dislocation, it's going to be displaced more medially or towards the spine. And a posterior dislocation is going to be lateral. And here's an example of each of those. Here again, you can see the anterior dislocation medially towards the spine. And here's an example of a posterior dislocation on the Y view that's more lateral. So the injuries associated with a dislocation of the shoulder are bank heart lesion, that's up to 90%, and a bony bank heart lesion, which I'll talk about as well, is around 5%. Hill sacs deformity is around 35 to 40%, and greater tuberosity fractures in about 10%. So you can see it's fairly high that you're going to have some kind of disruption of the shoulder joint, whether it's a fracture or one of the bank heart lesions. So let's start off with the bank heart lesion. This is a tear of the labrum of the glenohumeral joint. And you can see here, there's no bony disruption. It's just the labrum, which is torn. And again, this is present in 90% of dislocations. And here's another example. You can see that the capsule is stretched. And here's the anterior part of the labrum that's torn. And again, that's a Bancart lesion. You won't be able to see that on x-ray. However, you will be able to see a bony Bancart lesion on x-ray. And again, these have a much less percentage chance of happening, but you do need to look out for them. This occurs on the anterior inferior part of the glenoid rim as the head of the humerus dislocates past it anteriorly. And here's just another example you can see on CT scan and one more on a 3D reconstruction. So here you can see this is the glenoid and the rim right here has this fracture off of it. So the next one we're going to talk about is the Hill-Sachs deformity. This is a posterior lateral cortical depression fracture of the humeral head. And this is caused by the anterior glenoid rim. So here you can see that when the anterior rim hits it, as it dislocates, it, it causes this cortical depression fracture. One way you can remember these two, since the bony Bancart lesion and the hill sacs deformity are kind of the big two, is that the hill sacs deformity is to the humeral head. So they're all H's. That's one way you can remember. You can also have what's called a reverse 
tail sacs where it's more of an anterior humeral head defect. This occurs on posterior shoulder dislocation. So same mechanism as it pops out, it hits and causes the cortical deformity in the humeral head. It's just in a different location as the humeral head dislocates posteriorly. And the last one is the greater tuberosity fracture. This occurs in about 10% and it's something you definitely have to look out for on x-ray. Here's an example. It's fairly obvious. So three to remember for this talk. First of all, who do you need to x-ray? People that are over 40 years, first time dislocations, or if there's a traumatic mechanism, and of course if there's anything on exam that you think is concerning. And associated injuries are the Bancart and the Hill Sacks. Bancart usually refers to the labral tear that's associated with 90% of shoulder dislocations. However, in this case, when we're looking on x-ray, we're looking for the bony glenoid rim fracture. So that's the bony Bancart lesion. And then second, we have the Hill Sacks, which is the humeral head cortical depression fracture that occurs on the posterior lateral side as it dislocates anteriorly. Here are the references and thanks for joining us on EMN5.